Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, so today I want to do a story time. I don't actually think I've done any of those. Uh, yeah, so so let me do a story time. Um, so here's one thing about me. You know, you find two different types of women, two different types of ladies. When they go through stuff, you find the lady that would be going through something difficult and processing a difficult period in their lives. And they would be talking about it as they go through it, you know, telling their story, processing it with other people, telling them how they're feeling now, how they got through to that phase and the next phase and all of that. And that's their healing journey. And then you find people like me. Who come across very open but are in actual fact very private I'm in actual fact a very private person and so I have to process what's happening to me I have to process my shock my pain my hurt I have to get through it I have to deal with it and then I tell my story so I generally tend to tell my story once I've gotten to the other side um, I'll probably have one or two people um, riding the storm with me, but generally I tend to um, share when I'm done. I love sharing from an overcomer's perspective. I like my story to be told as a testimony. Um, and that's just who I am. Maybe I've got control issues. Maybe it makes me feel more in control once I've told it, you know, from the other side. Uh, but that's just um, how I've always been. So yeah, I am going to tell my story, this portion of my story, because I am on the other side of this journey. But I know there are many women going through this journey, many couples going through this journey, and I pray that the story will give you some form of encouragement. So I want to talk about miscarriage today. Um, many people don't know, but I've had two miscarriages. Um, one before each successful pregnancy. So I miscarried before baby Kenya, our first born, and I miscarried before baby Aruka, um, the baby. And so that's my story, and I just want to go through the process, how, how it happened, how it affected me, and how God restored, because he obviously restored. I'm a mom of two. Okay. So with the first pregnancy, I recall um, feeling weird, but of course I had never been pregnant, so I didn't know it was pregnancy. So I recall feeling weird and having pain on the side. I'm not sure if it was the left side or the right side, but I had pain and I consulted the doctor. We ruled out pregnancy and we kept it moving. But at some point um, within that month, I, I kind of like figured that no, this could be pregnancy. So I was just waiting like every other woman would for their periods. And my periods are generally very regular. So I knew that the period would confirm what was up. <clears throat> so it came period day, no period, and feeling weird on that day. So I kind of confirmed with you know, man, yeah, I must be pregnant. Did a pregnancy test. I remember it was a Friday and boom pregnant yay it's what i wanted blessing i'm so excited um this was a friday night i recall very well saturday morning woke up and um now i'm feeling weirder it's, it's just painful around my lower stomach my lower abdomen just a lot of pain and this pain then starts um it's followed by some bleeding but really light bleeding it's Saturday, so I couldn't get to my gynae, and so obviously Dr. Google. And so I'm on Dr. Google, and Dr. Google says, no, you can experience bleeding in the early stages of pregnancy. It's called implementation bleeding. It looks a bit like a period. And at that time, it was light. It looked a bit like a period. But as the day progressed, the bleeding got heavier, and the pain got worse. I was in so much pain. And Sunday, it continued. And I called my gynae, and he said that um, it's... It, I can't go to the emergency. I think he knew that if I'm miscarrying, carrying, that there's nothing they could do to to save the baby um, at this point. Um, so I just had to wait. And Monday would have been a public holiday, so I had to wait until Tuesday. 
so the whole weekend i've been pain and bleeding i'm worried i don't know what's happening um kind of like figuring that i'm probably miscarrying but there's nothing i can do about it yeah and so come tuesday go to the doctor doctor confirms that um it was a miscarriage and in actual fact it was an ectopic pregnancy so an ectopic pregnancy is when the baby um, does not attach to the uterus where it's supposed to be but the baby attaches to another tomb and uh, could grow there um, so it was an ectopic pregnancy the saddest one of the saddest days of my life I walked out of that consultation room in tears I was I was shattered. I was so hurt. Um, it was four weeks. <clears throat> and so it was in the early stages, but it's something I, I was looking forward to. So it felt like a piece of my heart was torn from me. Got home, slept, took painkillers. And there's these pills that they give you to clean out your womb. So because this pregnancy was in the early phases, it was only four weeks. I didn't have to go into surgery. They just gave me... Um, some tablets that you take that cleans out your womb so I, I went through that process and um, here's the thing with most with miscarriage is nobody knows what you're going through so you're kind of going through it alone you're alone or with or with your partner but it's such a, a thing and even if you tell your story people don't understand the pain of a death of what was never there unless you've been through it you will never understand that pain so i'm processing that pain um i'm at home sleeping took a few days of work just to process everything i think the blessing here was one um ectopic pregnancies can be fatal um if that pregnancy continues to grow and the mother doesn't know in a wrong tube and it bursts, uh, many women have lost their lives in that manner. So I'm thankful that I miss, not thankful, but yeah, my life was saved because um, I lost the pregnancy in a very early stage because ectopic pregnancies are very, very dangerous. I think the second blessing or silver lining was the fact that I did conceive um, because many women struggle to conceive and so doctors would always say uh, miscarriage is sad, it's hard emotionally but it's a good thing, it's a sign that your body can conceive, you can be with child so let's just be patient. Um, so I just tried to take those two positive things and run with it. I lost a lot of weight during that period um, physically and unintentionally. So I think looking back, it affected me more than I thought it did because um, I lost a lot of weight during that period. But yeah, um, in less than three months, we were pregnant again and we were blessed with baby Kenya Otandiweyo, who's just amazing and I wouldn't trade her in for the world. So God restored and God gave me something that I or someone that I needed in my life. My, my daughter, my firstborn is, she's amazing. She's, she's just my buddy. She's, she's a blessing. And so we raised Kenya and I didn't want to be pregnant um, early after Kenya. So I just wanted to give Kenya her time, her space, her attention. And then at some point I felt like, okay, ready for baby number two. And so I um, went to the doctor, did the checks, sees everything fine. Can I conceive? And I was given a go ahead um, after I took out the prevention stuff, the stuff that stopped you from getting pregnant. I felt pregnant again thinking it was four years old for going on five and um we had a feeling it was a boy and we had even named our baby i'll keep the name to me for now um and this pregnancy um it went on it was healthy it was beautiful we were excited um and we continued and 
just before week 12, which is the three months um, cap, when you've reached that three months, when you're about to, to, to give the announcement. I remember I was planning my announcement, how I'm going to tell my family and friends, social media, all those things. Because um, we, were, we were getting out of the danger zone. You know, pregnancy is the most fragile in the first three months. And that is why mommies try to keep it to themselves, just to get out of that danger zone. And then as you move into the second semester, you kind of like in the safe zone. Now, so I was now moving into the safe zone. It was 12 weeks. I remember it was um, the Christmas week and we were going to my family's house for Christmas. Um, and the theme was white and I hadn't gotten Kenya um, a white dress. So I wanted to go to the mall to go buy Kenya a white dress for Christmas. And on the way to the mall, we had a terrible accident that rolled off our car. I was obviously sitting in front, um, nothing hectic. We all came out with just few scratches and bruises, but the, the car was was um, written off and the impact was quite uh, a big. In fact, this was a pile up accident. So we hit a car in front and another car hit us at the back. So you can imagine that, um, you know, that impact, especially since I was sitting in front. So rushed to the to the hospital, to the ER emergency room, told them that I was pregnant, so couldn't get medication. Only, only thing they could give me was Panado for the pain. So cool, I was given Panado. So told them that I'm pregnant, and then they tried to put that machine on me. Um, where they checked the baby's heart, heart rate, um, heartbeat, if the baby's heart is beating normally. And the doctor in the RE was struggling with that machine hectically. And the nurses were struggling with that machine. I don't know if it was broken um, or they just couldn't handle it because they don't work in the maternity ward. I don't know. But they just could not get the machine um, working. And after a while, the doctor was like, okay, no, take Panado, go home. There's no bleeding. You're probably fine. And see your guy, you know. Um, yeah. And I didn't see my guy because there was no bleeding and I felt okay. And exactly 10 days after the accident, I started bleeding heavily. Guys, a pain like no other, a physical back pain, front pain, side pain. I've never felt the kind of pain that I felt. The first time round was nothing compared. Remember, we were 12 weeks in. This was no longer an embryo. This was a fetus. Like, it was three months. It was big. And so all this is coming out of me. I had never felt so much pain. Oh! And so, of course, call my doctor. And same thing, you know, um baby just at that level of pain and um, bleeding a pregnancy cannot be saved and so he's like it, it was Saturday again if you can sit it out and come to the consultation rooms on Monday let's do that and I'm like okay that's cool and I try and I try and I try but the pain is just unbearable and so end up going to the hospital the first thing I walked into the maternity ward and the first thing the nurse did was induce me because she could see the pain all over me and she gave me a quick injection and she said, it's going to put you to sleep. Um, so she gave me a quick injection and I just slept all night because doctor was not going to come in that night. It, it, it was at night time. So the only thing we could uh, manage was the pain. And so she gave me a quick injection that knocked me out and I slept. The doctor came in the morning and he obviously confirmed that it was another miscarriage. And um, this time I had to be wheeled into surgery uh, because baby was three months. So my wound had to be cleaned in surgery. Um, one of the saddest things is, is that this happened during COVID. So I had to go through this alone. No one was allowed in the hospital or in the ward with me. So I'm processing all of this alone. A very, very painful. Uh, I, um, I can't imagine what people went through who were hospitalized during COVID because my two days in hospital were hectic alone. 
Um, so I'm wheeled into surgery, cleaned up, and spent one more night in, in the hospital just for observation and pain. And yeah, I, I'm then discharged. I must be honest, the emotional pain of the second baby was less than the first pregnancy. And this is because the physical pain overshadowed everything. I was in so much physical pain. I just wanted the physical pain to end that I couldn't process the fact that I'm losing a baby at three months. I, my emotions couldn't even get there. Um, I just wanted the physical pain to end. Guys, it was bad. Um, but yeah, three months post that um, life-defining experience, I was pregnant again and um, baby Aruka was born. And I tell the story, not just to tell a story, but it's a testimony, okay? I want to encourage anybody who's struggling with miscarriages. I know that somebody might say, only two, I've had 10. I know of women who have 10, 12 miscarriages, miscarriage of the miscarriage. The baby just doesn't want to stick to the womb. I want to say to you that God will bless you with child. To the woman who's struggling to conceive, God will open your womb in 2023. Um, everything we tell women to do prior pregnancy are just formalities. Have more sex, drink folic acid, eat healthier, lose weight. Um, it's good to do those things as human beings. It's good to take some form of precaution. But children come from God. The blessing of child is from God. It is God who opened up the wombs of so many women in the Bible. It is God who blessed um, Abraham and Sarai at their old age. Um, and that is why the blessing of child is, is, is beautiful no matter how that child comes in. Ideally and churchily. We want a child to be born in a home with mom and dad in the confines of marriage. But a child is a blessing no matter how they come, you know. Um, sometimes in the most paid, painful manners and that child just becomes a light to that family. And so I want to encourage you to say that the same way Hannah kept on going to the temple to pray and cry out to God and ask God for a child and God eventually blessed her with Samuel. God is going to bless you. If God could open my womb to keep a baby, God can do it for you. I hope this encourages you not to give up on God, but go to him vulnerable and tell him that this is what you want. I want to pray for all those wombs today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bring the woman who's been struggling with miscarriages. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bring the woman who is not conceiving. I pray, Father God, that you bless their womb. I rebuke anything that is not of God in their womb in the name of Jesus. I wash and cleanse their wombs with the blood of Jesus. And I speak a blessing over their wombs in Jesus' mighty name. They will conceive and be with child in the name of Jesus. You are a God who blesses. You are a God who brings life. You are a God who restores. I pray for restoration. I pray for redemption. I pray for the blessing of child upon everybody who is trusting you with child in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you so, so much for watching. Please remember to like, share, subscribe. I'll see you soon.